That is not correct. That's not even changing, so. A lot of this isn't going to make sense to you. And I'm sorry about that. I'm just going to start at the beginning with the house. I lived here until I was 11, but I wasn't allowed inside half the rooms. That's nice. Can I check the mail? Inside the mailbox were bills from seven years ago, marked urgent, open immediately. I hadn't been back since my brother Lewis's funeral. Oh. And this is this? Yes, I punk. No, oh, can't jump off the side. It's like fucking frog. In her will, my mother left me a key, but didn't tell me what I'd unlocked. Hmm. Maybe she thought I'd know. Or she thought that the mystery would be enough to bring me back. Which way do I go? Uh... No one had driven this way in a long time, but I saw a few hoof prints. Hello. The truth is, even after I inherited the house, I never thought I'd come back to it. What's but so bad about it? But now I have questions it? about my family that only the house knew the answers to. What's so wrong about this house? That you're not telling us. This was exactly like I remembered it, the way I'd been dreaming about it. That's a pretty sick house, to be honest. Look at that. As a child, the house made me uncomfortable in a way I couldn't put into words. Now, as a 17-year-old, I knew exactly what those words were. I was afraid of the house. Oh. I did those joints. Why am I going through the doggy hole? Crawling through the doggy door used to be a lot easier when I was 11. The power had been turned off the night we left. Dad, why'd you leave?
for the first time in years. Yeah? I felt like I was home. Okay. Maybe it was your dad. Maybe that's why you felt home. But instead of a family, there were just memories of one. Oh. Like how after Lewis started working at the cannery, we all got sick of eating salmon. Except our cat, Molly. Or how only one restaurant would deliver to our house. So we had Chinese a lot. Mmm, Chinese. Um, that's not go upstairs yet. Let's go in here. Right, the so. table was still a wreck from the night we left. It was like a bomb had gone off, killing everyone but sparing the furniture. Looks like somebody's now called it. Nothing in the house looked abnormal. There was just too much of it. Like a smile with too many teeth. Even the fireplace had a story. Edie told me the bricks came from the original house. After it sank. It sank. Wait, how's this light working? Oh, it's so light. Great Grandpa Sven built a music box for Barbara, along with the rest of the house. Mom always told me to stay out of the basement, so I wasn't too surprised when the key didn't fit. How's that glued shut? My mom wasn't much of an optimist, but she never stopped believing that my brother Milton was alive. Oh. Oh. After Milton disappeared, Mom sealed up all the bedrooms. Then Edie retaliated and drilled peepholes. I spent a lot of time playing in Great Uncle Walter's room. Lewis told me there were secret passages, but I never believed him. Well. Turns out, my mom was really good at keeping secrets. Now it was time to find out what my mom had been afraid of. I have to rather come on the rest of the house. That door is good. Edie's father Odin built the original house. Wait. Mom must have locked the third floor stairs on the night we left. Just a fucking power cord broken. So it's not. Alright, mother. Where are you hiding? From the paintings on the wall, it was clear my brother Milton had been here before me. Shit. Reading this, maybe it sounds like I had a plan. But I had no idea what was behind that door. like I had no idea where all this was going to lead. I grew up looking at Molly's, Molly's gerbil had a tiny bedroom with its own even tinier gerbil cage. Being inside for the first time, I felt like I'd stepped behind a painting. Way to give me a game. December 13th, 1947. Dear Diary, I'll be gone soon, but I wanted to tell somebody about what's gonna happen. 
It started when Mom sent me to bed without dinner. I woke up and I was starving, so I looked around for something to eat. My Halloween candy was all gone. The gerbil food was dry, but I didn't mind it. Give pups. Mom. Get up here. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Come on. Mom, can I come out now? Sweetheart, it's late. Go to sleep. I kept eating and eating. Oh. I ate a lot of things that night. Then I heard chirping outside my window. Yes, go it was a barn swallow going back to her nest. I reached out for her. And suddenly, I was a cat. Okay, crazy person. I tried to be quiet, but the bird was really scared. didn't even look at me. I'll get that booty. I jumped and I almost got her. I could tell she was getting really tired. Now I was up in the big tree. I promised Dad I wouldn't climb it anymore. All I cared about was eating that mama bird. I gobbled her up. And suddenly, I was an owl. First, all I heard was the wind. Then I heard little teeth nibbling in the grass. too big to carry. I started choking, but I couldn't stop eating. And suddenly, I was a shark! This sick's crazy.
and into the ocean. Now, I was hungrier than ever. Mm, I, like I wanted seal. fat, juicy seals. a monster and I smelled people everywhere. smell went into an old pipe. I got closer and closer. My stomach started growling. And suddenly, I was me again. I held my breath for a long time, but I couldn't hear anything. I think it's waiting for me to fall asleep. But it's not going to wait much longer. It needs to be, and we both know. I will be delicious. Okay. 
I'm not gonna watch creepy. I'm not sure if I believed all of that, but I'm sure Edie would have. I got the sense Edie had spent a lot of time here before my mom sealed the doors. This will be obvious later, but my mom never told me any of these stories. Edie would have, but mom didn't like bringing up the past. So, when we adopted a stray kitten, she was the one who named it Molly. I spent a lot of time in Great Grandma Edie's room. Edie knit me a new pair of gloves every year, just in time to replace the old ones. Louis died a week before we left, but Edie had already started to memorialize him. Her room was like a museum. For 500 years, the Finches have been famous throughout Norway for their fortune and misfortune. Odin Finch buries the latest victims of the family curse, his wife Ingeborg, and their newborn son, Johan. Johan. On January 7th, 1937, he set sail with his family and his house, hoping to leave the curse behind. But 40-foot waves off the coast of Washington send the house and Odin to the bottom of the sea. Odin's daughter Edie, with husband Sven and baby Molly, step ashore on their new home, Orcas Island. Odin Finch is the first to be buried in the new family cemetery. His daughter Edie is already dreaming of a new Finch house. Whatever's wrong with this family, it goes back a long ways. When Edie told people Sven was killed by a dragon, she could also have said he was building a dragon-shaped slide that collapsed. She could have, but she didn't. Even in her 90s, sometimes Edie seemed a lot younger than my mother. The fuck is this bathroom? The only trace Grandpa Sam's first wife Kay left on the house was the pink bathroom. You don't fucking say. It was a pretty big trace.
There's a secret in this bathroom. It's in the last place you would look. It isn't in the cupboard. It's hidden in this book. No. Sven gave Sam an old camera he'd refurbished. He never put it down. Grandpa Sam had a twin, and that he never talked about him. I guess my grandpa didn't like history any more than my mom did. How I Want to Remember My Brother by Sam Finch. The thing I remember is that when he made up his mind, that was it. said he'd die before he ate another mushroom. And he did. Oh. At Barbara's funeral, we swore he'd never be afraid again. And he wasn't. I think Calvin always wanted to fly. Stop! Calvin! Dino, Sadie! Coming! Nope. I won't play off but this that roof, Ma. He's fine made up his mind to do it. Bye, I told brother. him going around is impossible. Maybe if I hadn't said that. Maybe if the wind hadn't picked up. Then maybe he'd still be here. But I doubt. I think he'd already made up his mind. Let me fly. That's what I want to remember about my brother. <laughs> the day he made up his mind to fly. And he did. Sad stuff there. Calvin's story felt strangely familiar. When I was younger, I remember trying to do the exact same thing. Oh. After the funeral, Edie roped off Calvin's half of the room. Mom said Grandpa Sam enlisted at 18 and never set foot in the room again.
rooms and we had a house. The passages were a pretty tight fit. They'd obviously been built for smaller hands and bellies. Growing up, I always thought of Barbara as a child star. Of all the stories people wrote about Barbara's death, I'm surprised Edie saved this one. Oh, Jack here with another ghastly tale. Inspired by America's most unfortunate family. I'm calling it the surprise ending of Barbara Finch. As a child star, Barbara was famous for her scream. Now at 16, she was all washed up. A has been. But in a lucky break, she'd been asked to perform her signature scream at a local convention for monster movie fans. It was just a boost her career needed. Unfortunately, her scream hadn't aged well. Getting better. I think you just need the right motivation. Her biggest fan and current boyfriend, Rick was about to demonstrate when... Now that was a great dream. It was Barbara's father, Sing. He'd slipped into a table saw and had to be rushed to the emergency room. So Barbara got stuck babysitting her youngest brother, Walter. Her convention comeback was cancelled. Okay, I'm hearing frustration but I'm not hearing terror. What if I tried... A gang of hoodlums and Halloween masks have been terrorizing Orca's Island tonight. Police are urging residents to... That came from the basement. You're right. Also, I loved your delivery on that. Why is your basement door locked? Because my dad likes making puzzles and secret passages. There's a key hidden in the music box. The secret is to keep winding and winding until finally, the key pops out. Thanks, babe. I'll be back in a sec. Twenty minutes later, Rick hadn't returned. So Barbara went to look for him, right on cue. She reached for the music box. And as she wound the key, she listened for Rick, but the house was silent. Oh, she found Rick's scratch and imagined the worst. Yeah. 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 Fuck so. The gang's leader is the infamous hookman killer, Dr. Carl Hamill, who impaled and then ate his family ten years ago tonight. trying to scare you to help you find your screen. Well, I'm not scared, Rick. I'm furious. Then I'm act furious. furious. All I'm getting from you now is that you're hurt and confused and... She threw him out, but 
She kept a little something to remember him by. Barb, have you seen my other crutch? And she was still holding it when she fell asleep watching the late, late picture show. Hours later... Barbara! Walter, what's going on up there? Ah! Okay, I'm coming up. But if this is a trick, you're dead, Walter. The fuck? How did that move? Describe the man as six feet tall with a steel hook for a hand. Residents are urged to lock all doors and windows and notify the police of any suspicious activity. I returned, saw the hook man, and was speechless. He was quite smashing. <laughs> Out of here. That night, she played her part beautifully. Molly, you're My boyfriend. Yeah. They were, and she realized what was about to happen. She was going to be famous. And with her final breath, Barbara Finch gave the performance of her life. I wasn't there myself, but I hear Barbara was magnificent. She had a taste for stardom, but unfortunately, so did her fans. Of course, the police blamed it all on poor Rick, who disappeared the same night. And little Walter, hiding under his bed the whole time. He took it all pretty hard, but that's another story. As for Barbara, Inside the music box is all they ever found of her. Her ear. Now that's what I call a real eerie tale. Oh, damn. (laughs) 
Edie told me all Barbara wanted was to be remembered, as absurd as that comic was. Maybe what Edie saw was a happy ending. I guess now I know why Mom didn't like me playing with the music box. Huh. That vanishes. Fixed. Mom said the basement was off limits, unless I wanted another tetanus shot. I saw Edie sneak down to the basement once, carrying packages. I thought maybe she was hiding presents. It turned out she was hiding a lot more than that. I remember asking mom once about where Walter had gone. She said after Barbara died, he got as far away as he could. If there's a pattern in all these stories, I think it's that none of us has gotten very far. Goodbye, everyone. I can't believe I've been down here for 30 years. On that first day, after the shaking started, I didn't think I'd survive a week. But after a few days, I settled into a routine. That's what kept me sane. Having a schedule, living for today. I always expected to be dead tomorrow. But if you wait long enough, you get used to anything. Even a monster. On the other side of the door, it starts to feel normal. Almost friendly. And then one day, everything just... stopped. Whatever that thing was, it was gone. Maybe it got tired of waiting. Or maybe I just got tired of being afraid. It's been a week now, the longest in 30 years. I'm done waiting. I have to leave. Well, I still can. Okay. I know it's out there somewhere. Whatever killed Barbara. Molly 
and Calvin. Maybe this is all a mistake. But I need to stop living the same day, even if it kills me. Yeah, whatever's out there. I want you to know, I'm ready for it. I'm going to appreciate all of it, especially the food. I don't mind if I only have a year left, or a month, or a single week. I'd be happy with one more day. I can already imagine the sun on my face. Yeah, it's not the sun, buddy. Walter died when I was six. I can't believe my mom never told me he was down here. I'm sure my mom was trying to protect me. Maybe she was afraid I'd end up like Walter. But if she never told me about an uncle under the house, I can only imagine what else she was hiding. I don't want to make the same mistakes she made. Trying to bury something that's still alive. Now that there's only one of us left, or maybe two, I thought it was time I heard the stories for myself and found out what happened to everyone else. Oh. But now I'm worried the stories themselves might be the problem. Maybe we believed so much in a family curse, we made it real. I don't know if I should even be writing this. I had to. This is a weird game. <laughs> 